Hi, I'm Roman and this is Massive Voodoo TV. Today I want to speak about frame dioramas and the reasons why I started them. Tell you a little bit about their creation. Enjoy! <laughs> Alright, I give you a small overview of what's coming at you. First I will talk about the reasons why I create these dioramas, second I will talk about the inspiration, then the story of the first diorama, the building process, the painting process. We'll tell you a little bit about the frames I use and speak about the conclusion. Once in a while you get stuck in the development as a painter. It's time to seek new inspiration. It's time to challenge yourself sometimes. Or on the other hand, sometimes it's also important to step back a little bit. I painted many, many busts, many, many figures. Over 9,000! In our miniature hobby, we can do a wide variety of things. We can play tabletop games. We can just paint miniatures for fun. We can have a mix between the both. We can paint the best armies. We can paint for painting competitions. We can not paint and just game. We can build dioramas. We can scale model. We can do a lot of things that is this passion. Can you imagine that you get bored sometimes when you do this as a job? Not burned out, but bored. Bored out, don't get me wrong. I love my job. I love everything on it. I painted so many small scaled figures, large scaled models, busts, dioramas, many, many things, and I'm doing this now since about 20 years. I kind of found myself in, the, in a situation where I was searching for what really makes me happy in miniature art. And for me, it's storytelling and composition. That's what makes me happy. And these frames, like, they offer exactly this. They offer a canvas, a three-dimensional canvas, that I am about to compose. Two aspects came together for the inspiration of these frame dioramas. One, I had the first idea in 2018 when I was actually playing a computer game. The initial idea came from playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey some years back, um, where I saw um, a wall relief. I saw something in a computer game dance, yeah. So yeah, I get inspired by computer games. Two, I once lived beside a very moody graveyard that I strolled once in a while, took a walk, enjoyed the silence, thought about life and took some photos there that I found in the retro perspective really inspirational. And I really wanted to take... I was thinking about taking a box like this um, to create a diorama inside, something I've done before. One was the car diorama Memories 1, done after I've been to Sweden to a car graveyard, visited a friend there and taught a painting class. And the second one was the Lord of the Jungle diorama I did a while back. I still remember that one day when a lightning struck me and I just went to the local Warhammer store and my buddy there just looked at me because I was buying like a lot of random stuff, not connected to any army list. And of course he asked me what I'm about to do. So I explained a little bit on my plans that I want to glue them all together in a frame. <laughs> I started that idea in 2019. I was taking just the lid, the lid of it and started my first initial plan Still, it's different from making a picture because this was just like something built inside a box. A picture has more about composition on it, where you really have to make um, prior thoughts on how to compose things and limit yourself to the frame size and depth. I really enjoyed the start of the project when I started to paint it, but somehow I lost track and focus on it and joy and paused it, put it on hold. Of course, I did not invent boxed or framed dioramas. They've been there in art, historical miniature art, 
but not so often in fantasy art. It was before the time of backdrops. While I had my project on hold and trying to discover where this will lead, it was really interesting to see that some people took up the idea and just played with it. This was on one hand inspirational and on the other hand a little bit disturbing as mine wasn't done yet. Being stuck in a project is not a good feeling. But somehow I learned that every project has its time. It's time of creation, it's time of inspiration, and sometimes it also needs time to think that you hit the right moment to be able to continue. For me this time came in early 2022, when I just decided to pick this up again and finish it. In a retro perspective it was a mixture of the inspiration I received over the years and also the will to finish it. I understood what was missing, I missed the frame around it, took one from my wall and cut it in pieces. After investing some time of painting and building the frame, my first frame diorama was done. This felt like a wall has been torn apart. After finishing it, a tsunami of inspiration hit me. I wanted to do more. I did a second one, called the Reign of Vengeance, where I was able to play with my love of space marines. <laughs> I realized that the frames are really important for me. The next frame diorama project was a study of Frank Frasetta's work. Followed by a space wolf diorama called Falcon, v v called Falcon Rivka. To celebrate the savage chapter of the space wolves. What I really enjoy is digging myself into one topic for such a frame diorama and putting so much love, passion and level of detail in terms of storytelling in it. I also have the feeling that I don't do one theme twice. After I was done with the Space Wolves, I was pretty sure that I don't want to see any Space Wolves pretty soon again. But therefore, I started new topics. Still connecting to my geek love that I have for the Warhammer and the Warhammer 40k lore and my mind started racing for new ideas. In the meantime I'm writing down ideas that I have continuously. And I'm also starting my first commissions. There will be a, dra a fire dragon and a blood angel diorama. So keep your eyes open on my social channels to see work in progress material. I'm grateful to some collectors who started collecting these pieces. Feels like I'm painting a canvas. I love these pieces when they are primed. They look so so natural. The building aspect is always very busy visually, but when they are primed, black and white, it just looks adorable. I love that state.
I also will tell you a little bit on how I create these. Many people ask me where I get these frames, super special looking frames from. I usually buy them on flea markets or eBay flea market. Of course, they don't pop out like mushrooms in, aut in autumn forests. And you have to search for them. You have to invest a little bit of time and then find ones that are of a reasonable price. Of course, you can build your dioramas also in a regular frame. If you feel the itch of creating your first frame diorama um, and you're standing on the edge to do so, then jump. It's so much fun. I it's unbelievable. It's wonderful. If you're interested in in-depth step-by-steps on the creation of these projects, you can check back with my Etsy shop, link down below. There will be a new one about the Underhive Escher Necromunda diorama very soon. I'm close to finishing it. Keep an eye out also on my social channels to see, to see when it's ready. And as these are so close to canvases, I decided to also offer art prints. You can find the links down below. Some are limited and some are available for a longer time. Thanks for enjoying the video. Don't forget to subscribe here or over there. I have no idea. Thanks for pressing thumbs up. You're helping the channel to grow and um, there will be more content like this for you in the future. Happy creation to you. Um, Roman out. Keep on happy painting. Bye bye. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now wake up In the last 20 years, I painted many, many figures, busts, dioramas I would say over, over 9,000 Over 9,000 Followed by a Space Wolf diorama called Falcon the... the, the